Yeah, Dr. Aniket, we are about to start. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, sir. Okay, just give me one minute, please. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening episode of Pursue. This is Pursue 15U, which is hematology, erythrocytic diseases. And we are streaming live from the iconic IPGMER Kolkata. Right? <clears throat> and today's topic is something very basic but very important, which is hypersplenism and hyposplenism. And to talk on that, we have Dr. Aniket Haldar. He is an MBBS MD Path gold medalist and a DNB from, in pathology. He is an assistant professor in the gastrointestinal and liver pathology unit of the School of Digestive and Liver Diseases, IPDMER, Kolkata. He has got more than 25 publications in national and international journals with areas of interest in GI pathology, liver pathology, breast pathology, and cytopathology. He has been the thesis co guides of postgraduates and postdoctoral trainees at IPGMER with ongoing project under the WB. DSTBT titled Study of Interstitial Cells of Casual in Chronic Constipation in Children of Two Years Duration. He's got contributions in various books, one of them being the Textbook of Pathology for MBBS by Dr. A.K. Mondal and Shramana Choudhury. Before I ask Dr. Halda to start, let me request all of you to keep your mic muted, your camera off, and please don't, sh don't share your screen. With this, let me request Dr. Aniket, sir, please share your screen and let us start. Just press that arrow there yeah. and press it now, your entire screen. Click in the center and share. Is it visible, sir? Yeah, please make it full screen. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Is it... It's fine. Is it visible? Yeah, it's good to go. Please start. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir, for your introduction. So today's topic uh, on which I will be talking is hyperspinism and hypospinism. It is a very basic topic, but um, uh, all the residents of pathology should have a clear understanding of the function of the spleen and the different aspects of hyperspinism and hypospinism. So today in this talk, I will uh, give the basic outline of this talk will be on the basic anatomy and function of the spleen, splenomegaly and its causes which is the hyperfunctioning of the spleen with its causes, approach and management. Uh, the treatment of hyperspinism, the cases where the conditions where spinectomy is required and its implications. And finally, on hypospinism, its causes, approach and management. So starting with the basics, the spleen is the largest lymphoid organ of the body. It is a sec secondary lymphoid organ, just like the lymph node. And it is an intraperitoneal organ, also known as the organ of odds. Uh, its size is approximately 1 into 3 into 5 inches. Approximate weight is 250 to 300 grams, which is uh, around 7 ounces. And it's located between the 9th to 11th ribs. And it's derived from the mesoderm. It has a very important role in hematopoiesis in the intrauterine life, where along with the liver, it is the principal uh, organ of hematopoiesis from 3rd to 7th month of intrauterine life. So going to the anatomy of the spleen, the spleen receives its blood supply from the splenic artery. So the splenic artery, when it uh, when it uh, goes into the spleen, into the uh, it enters the spleen through the hilum, and it branches into the trabecular artery. And the the, the, the terminal branches of the tra trabecular artery, as they enter into the splenic parenchyma, they, uh, along with the trabecular artery branches, there is a coaxial length of uh, a lymphoid sheet that covers these arteries as it enters into the spleen. This is known as the periarterial lymphatic sheet, which is which is the uh, lymph lymphoid cells, mainly the T, T cells, which are rich in the periarterial areas. And along with them, in the periphery, there are some follicles and nodules of the B cells. So the, the, these B cells are present in the follicles, and just outside the uh, follicles there is the marginal zone and this marginal zone along with the follicle uh, and the periarterial lymphoid sheet they form what is called the white pulp and uh, 
the uh, central uh, the telecular artery branch which enters into the screen it then uh, branches and divides into central arteriole which goes into the red pulp so this red pulp it's composed of the splenic cords and the venous sinuses so a cut section through a cross section through this um, white pulp and through this red pulp we can see uh, this is the central arteriole in the right hand figure and uh, around this central artery, this, this greenish light green area is the periarterial lymphatic sheet which in the T cells and there are these lymphoid follicles, these blue areas just at the periphery and outside this B cell zone is the peri uh, this marginal zone and outside the marginal zone is the perifollicular area. So this is what uh, constitutes the white pulp and the red pulp uh, it forms the reticular endothelial system of the skin. This uh, terminal branch of the central arteriole, when it enters into the skin parenchyma, the blood flow through this uh, 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 through the central arteriole can take two paths. It can I, uh, it can either in, enter into an open circulation and open system that is can directly flow into the splenic cords and. 90% of the blood it enters uh, through the splenic ar uh, arteriole, central arteriole into the splenic cords, and only less than 10% of the blood it enters into the splenic uh, the uh, veins, which are the venous sinusoids. So what happens to this blood which enters into this open system, that is into the splenic cords? These RBCs, RBCs, they have to enter back into this uh, circulation through the fenestrated intercapillary areas as we can see in this figure and uh, this uh, splenic cords or the cords of Bilroth they are nothing but the reticular connective tissue area which which is composed mainly of the fibroblast and the specialized macrophages and some amounts of B cells. So in this skin most of the blood that enters uh, into the skin that has to enter into the splenic cord and then they have to return and enter into this splenic sinuses through these fenestrations. So this forms the reticular endothelial system of the spleen. So the microcirculation of the red pulp, uh, we have an open system which is a slow transit system and 90%, 80 to 90% of the blood tenders into the open system that is into the splenic cords and less than uh, 20%, uh, around 10% of the blood has a rapid transit to the closed system in which the uh, the branches of the central ar arteriole they directly communicate with the venous sinuses through the capillaries the spleen flow rate is about five percent of the blood volume that is uh, in a assuming a person to have five liters of total blood volume around 250 ml of blood enters into the uh, spleen per minute so in 20 minutes uh, the entire blood has a circulation through the spleen so um, we can understand that the blood has repeated pass uh, passages through the spleen and so the uh, blood has to undergo uh, this clinic surveillance multiple times a day and there is a process called the plasma scheming what, what is plasma scheming plasma scheming is the method as I, I have said in the open system the blood directly enters into this open system into this clinic cords so the blood has different components but uh, by the process of plasma scheming the red cells which are more denser they usually uh, are present in the axial stream and this uh, uh, the, through this axial stream, they directly uh, end up going into the red pulp. Whereas the uh, components that we are present in the periphery of the stream, that is mainly the leukocytes and the plasma or, and the macrophages or the dendritic cells or all these, these are present in the periphery and they directly go into the white pulp, which is present at the lateral parts. So. Uh, in this skin, uh, about 25% of the whole of the T cells of the body they are present in the spleen, whereas uh, 10 to 15% of B cells they are present in the spleen itself. As I had said, the T cells are mainly present at the periarterial lymphatic sheet, whereas the B cells they are present in the follicles, which are just at the periphery of this uh, lymphatic sheet. The marginal zone, this marginal zone is the place uh, which bridges between the white pulp and the red pulp and this marginal zone this is the very specialized zone which is uh, very important and that i will discuss and this marginal zone is composed mainly of the macrophages the dendritic cells 
and the B cells, the specialized B cells, which are also known as the IgM marginal zone B cells. These macrophages and the IgM positive B cells, these B cells are these these cells of the marginal zone, zone they are mainly involved in the innate immune system and the innate immunity that the screen has to offer and this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this aspect is very important for protection of our body, uh, protection towards uh, infections by encapsulated organisms <coughs> that i will discuss in the next slides so just a recapitulation of the functions of the screen First is the filtration function, that is the quality control of the red cells. The screen, as I have said, uh, uh, it, is a, uh, it is a huge reservoir uh, of the blood components and there is pooling of platelets, WBCs and RBCs in the screen. It has protective and immunological function and it has exterminatory hematopoiesis, is, is an important function of the screen. Although in normal individuals it is not uh, prominent, but in diseases where there is ineffective erythropoiesis, the screen may take up the function of hematopoiesis and uh, we try to compensate the disease conditions and screen has an important function in the iron metabolism because <laughs> the senescent RBCs, they, uh, they, uh, the senescent and the, the damaged RBCs, they are uh, taken up by the macrophages, the hemoglobin of these RBCs, they are broken down into heme and globin, formation of new blood cells. So going to the functions one by one. The first most important function of the uh, screen is the uh, is ensuring the quality control of the RBCs. So when the red cells they pass through the open system uh, of the splenic cords, the RBCs get sequestered in, uh, in the screen. They stay there for some time and they have to enter into the venous sinusoids through the fenestrated cap uh, fenestrated endothelial cells. So what ha what happens is that uh, as these cells are sequestered in the screen, the they, they will undergo ox oxidative damage and mm, uh, there will be oxidative stress to the cells so the damaged cells these damaged cells they will uh, they, they will be uh, unable to enter into these fenestrated capillaries and so they will be phagocytosed by the macrophages macrophages which are present in in the reticulum of the splenic cords also the antibody and the complement coated red cells which enter uh, into the uh, splenic cords they are also picked up by the uh, by the macrophages and are killed there so uh, the important function of the spleen is the culling of this uh, of, of the red cells which is nothing but the destruction of the aged and deformed rbcs and there is another function of the important function of the spleen that is spitting spitting means the removal of red cell inclusions uh, in, in the spleen so this is a figure how a schematic diagram how pitting uh, occurs the red cells with, um, usually they have a bi biconcave shape and they are uh, very flexible. They enter into the venous sin sinuses through the fenestrations. But the part of the RBCs which contains the inclusions, they are trapped because they are more denser and they are not e e easily flexible and they are more rigid and they are trapped uh, in these fenestrations. And the sinus macrophages they pick up uh, and they engulf this pitted parts and remove them from the circulation, remove them from the RBCs and these RBCs they then enter into the circulation through the venous sinusoids. So the another important function is the reservoir function of, uh, of the screen that is the screen contains uh, about 5% of the circulating RBCs uh, and this is variable this can be decreased in different infiltrative diseases and uh, in different congestive diseases like portal hypertension due to cirrhosis this will be increased so this is an important function of the, of the screen about 30 to 50 percent of our wbcs are present in the screen and this is called the marginal pool of the wbcs in cases of splenic enlargement there can be uh, pooling of the wbcs about 80 percent of the wbcs may be pooled in the screen and uh, this can cause peripheral cytopenias in, in cases of different cases of splenomegaly associated with hyperspinism that I will discuss later and also the another important function is the reservoir function of platelets. The screen is the main reservoir of platelets about one third of the lifespan of the platelets is spent in the screen and about 30% of platelets are stone, stored in the screen 
in normal individuals whereas in cases of splenomegaly about 90 spleen may sequester about 90 percent of the total platelet pool so in cases of splenomegaly there can be significant thrombocytopenia and this is mainly due to the excessive pooling of the blood in the spleen now coming to the protective and immunological function of the spleen it is to be remembered that uh, the spleen is involved both in the innate and ad adaptive immune responses now like the lymph nodes which are the another uh, secondary lymphoid organs the lymph nodes are mainly involved uh, uh, in the adaptive immune responses uh, through this that, that is mainly through the cd4 plus t cells and um, why the lymph nodes are mainly involved uh, in the adaptive immune responses because the flow to the lymph node is through the uh, lymphatic system whereas uh, the systemic uh, the systemic blood and the hematogenous uh, uh, the the, uh, the flow of the uh, defined pathogens to, uh, to the skin is through the uh, hematogenous route so all the blood borne pathogens all the blood borne pathogens they enter into the skin and the main components of the innate immune system are the macrophages and the marginal zone b cells as, as i had said earlier that the marginal zone b cells and the macrophages present in the marginal zone they are involved in the innate immune system which is the primary immune uh, component or the barrier immunity so uh, how the macrophages are involved in the innate immune system the macrophages uh, present in the marginal zones have specific receptors which are called the pattern recognition receptors these pattern recognition re receptors can identify different molecular patterns which are known as pathogen associated molecular patterns pams or the damage associated molecular patterns that is the dams so this uh, pattern recognition receptors they are the toll like receptors and uh, other forms of uh, receptors like the nod like receptors c type lectin receptors and uh, the rig like receptors so these receptors are present uh, in the macrophages uh, or in the marginal zone so when the blood borne pathogens they uh, enter into this thing uh, these macrophages they directly uh, identify this uh, different pans on the present on this different blood borne pathogens and directly phagocytose and kill these organisms also the marginal zone b cells the b cells that is present in the marginal zone they are uh, specified low affinity uh, uh, they are low affinity igm producing b cells which can identify uh, the different li lipopolysaccharide molecules present in encapsulated organisms through the t cell independent pathway uh, without involving the helper helper t cells so these two uh, mechanisms are mainly involved in protection sorry in protection uh, towards the uh, against the encapsulated organisms also the b cells which are present in the uh, in the uh, follicles uh, they are mainly involved in producing diff uh, different immunoglobulins mainly the iggs and this is done mainly uh, in relation with the uh, cd4 t cells which are present in the peri arterial lymph lymphatic sheet uh, these b cell get matured and through the t cell dependent pathway they undergo clonal expansion within the follicles and they also undergo different processes like the ant antigen class switching and uh, antibody class switching and uh, they produce the antibodies uh, by differentiating into the plasma cells the spleen also has uh, 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 important functions in production of different complement components like the propiodin, which activates complement through the alternative pathway, and uh, molecules like tuftsin. This tuftsin is uh, involved in uh, stimulating the neutrophils for for phagocytosis, and it also stimulates the splenic uh, red pulp is composed of the splenic sinuses and the splenic cords and uh, they are mainly involved in the function of blood filter uh, that is the pitting and culling of the um, uh, of the cells and this marginal zone this is the very important zone which is unique to the skin which is capsules or the sugar or they have sugar moieties in their capsules and uh, this marginal zone this bridges uh, the gap between the uh, white pulp and the red pulp so now if we move on now moving to the topic proper we will discuss this different splenic disorders so the splenic disorders can be anatomical and it can be functional 
So anatomical defect is splenomegaly, which is enlargement of the skin, and functional disorders. It is it can be hypersplenism, that is the hyperactivity of the skin. It can be hypospinism where there is decreased activity of the skin, or it can be asplenia where there can be an anatomical absence or a functional absence of the entire splenic function. So we are more concerned with the functional defects rather than the anatomical uh, uh, alterations in the spleen. And it should be borne in mind that splenomegaly is not equivalent to hypersplenism because there are uh, the, uh, different uh, uh, conditions in which uh, the spleen may be in, uh, enlarged but there can uh, there cannot uh, there may, may not be any significant hyperactivity of the spleen or there can be cases where the spleen can be enlarged but there is there are features of hypospleenism so hypersplenism or hypospleenism is not equivalent to splenomegaly no what is splenomegaly uh, part say it is the enlargement of the spleen and the spleen size and palpability they are not all not equivalent for example uh, 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 in case of wandering spleen for uh, which is nothing but a lax phrenico uh, polic ligam uh, ligament in which uh, in which due to this lax ligament this spleen it, it may come down from its normal anatomical position and can be palpable and it is also highly mobile so a palpable spleen is not Mm, or always reproducible uh, with uh, increased spleen size. So, spleen size, uh, also the spleen size is not a really reliable indicator of splenic function, as I had said already. So, splenomegaly, uh, we uh, can ask uh, clinically, uh, in which um, we measure the size of the spleen below the left costal margin, it can be uh, enlarged mild when it is 1 to 3 cm and it, it is massive when it is more than 8 cm and usually crosses the midline and um, umbilicus. <coughs> but more uh, uh, actual assessment of this spinning enlargement can be done on a CT or a USG where less than 13 cm is considered to be uh, normal whereas a craniocaudal length of more than 20 cm uh, should be considered massive spinomegaly and the post dissection mass if it is more than one kg, it is usually associated with massive splenomegaly. So, the causes of splenomegaly, splenomegaly uh, the, we can classify splenomegaly uh, depending on the defined mechanism. So, the first mechanism is the congestive, uh, congestive cause in which due to different organ failure like cirrhosis where there can be portal hypertension and congestion of the spleen or a right heart failure. Uh, which will ca cause splenomegaly. There can be obstruction, obstruction due to portal hepatic or splenic vein thrombosis, obstruction due to cystosomiasis because cystosomiasis may cause po uh, portal vein th uh, thrombosis and obstruct the portal vein and uh, can cause splenomegaly. The splenomegaly can also be due to work hypertrophy. This work hypertrophy can be due to immune hypertension, which is seen in different chronic infections and chronic inflammation, where uh, there is increase in the white pulp of the skin and this is the this can be uh, due to different viral bacterial or parasitic uh, infections uh, it can be also associated with chronic inflammation like sarcoid like sle rheumatoid arthritis or uh, in different lymphohistocytosis and this work hypertrophy that is the uh, increase in the hypertrophy of the red pulp it can be either due to erythrocyte sequestration which can be seen uh, in different types of hemolytic anemias it can be seen in sickle cell disease sickle cell disease usually uh, in sickle cell disease we get a uh, we get a atrophic spleen or uh, there can be autosplenectomy but in early, in the early phases of uh, sickle cell disease we, we can uh, often have a um, increased spleen size uh, and this can be fatal in many cases where there can be acute sequestration and pooling of the red cells causing hypovolemic shock so that I will discuss later. So in very early uh, phases of sickle cell disease we can also have um, splenomegaly due to acute erythrocyte sequestration and the splenomegaly uh, due to extramedullary hematopoiesis which is again seen in different hemolytic anemias to compensate for the uh, ineffective erythropoiesis in myelofibrosis due to infiltration by tumors 
leukemias or due to radiations. And lastly, the other causes of splenomegaly uh, can be infiltration by the different meta which can be malignant or non-malignant. Non-malignant causes can be metabolic. That is infiltration by Gaucher, uh, Gaucher by the Gaucher cells, human pig disease, glycogen storage disease, or can be malignant infiltration due to infiltration by leukemias, lymphomas, metastatic tumors, which uh, increases the the vascular bed of the skin and which increases the uh, overall reticulum and the vascular bed and hence uh, causes splenomegaly. <laughs> so there are certain, uh, some causes which can cause massive splenomegaly, uh, some conditions like myeloproliferative neoplasms, lymphomas, uh, different infections like malaria and kalazar, they can cause tropical splenomegaly syndromes with massive splenomegaly. Uh, this is this is this is mainly due to uh, the activation of the uh, of the white pulp. The, 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 this can also be due to uh, the uh, this can also be due to uh, the, the activation of the macrophages uh, in the spleen and extramedullary hematopoiesis. As I had said in thalassemias, uh, there can be extramedullary hematopoiesis causing massive splenomegaly and different infiltrative disorders, most notably in Gaucher disease, there can be massive splenomegaly. So now coming to our topic proper, that is the functional disorder, that is hyperspinism. So what is hyperspinism? Uh, hyperspinism is nothing but hyperfunctioning of the spleen or hyperactive spleen. So, so this is uh, this was introduced by Schofard in 1907, and it's uh, not a, a clinical syndrome, and it uh, does, does not imply a specific causal mechanism. In most cases, it is a secondary uh, to some certain primary etiologies and. The features of hyperspinism is splenomegaly. There should be splenomegaly along with cytopenia. The cytopenias can be uh, monocytopenia, unicytopenia, or this there can pancytopenia. And usually on uh, bone marrow, although bone marrow is not routinely done for confirmation of hyperspinism, but uh, the bone marrow it will be normocellular to hypercellular, and the final confirmation of hyperspinism will be the response to splenectomy. If we classify hyperspinism, as I had said, hyperspinism is most often uh, secondary due to some primary etiologies like infections, uh, alcoholism, portal hypertension, uh, uh, hemo defined hemolytic anemias or infiltrative diseases, storage diseases in uh, granulomatous inflammations. So in 90% of the cases, it's secondary. Less than 10% cases, it can be primary. The etiology is unknown, and uh, there can be primary splenic hyperplasia, uh, or, or the other term that is the uh, non-specific, uh, the non-serotic portal fibrosis or Punty syndrome, where there can be idiopathic portal hypertension along with uh, hypersplenism. <coughs> and there is a third entity called occult hyperspinism, which is clinically not relevant because uh, in occult hyperspinism it is defined by hyperspinism which which is usually compensated by bone marrow hyperplasia so the, there will there will not be any peripheral cytopenias and hence it will not be manifested and so it's clinically not relevant now pathogenesis of hyperspinism uh, the pathogenesis of a hyperactive spin is uh, due to splenomegaly and this splenomegaly uh, will cause will cause uh, increased sequestration of the blood components uh, uh, in the spleen and this increased retention of the spleen will cause peripheral cytopenias so this is one cause of uh, uh, hyper pathogenesis of hypersplenism the other uh, pathology be behind hypersplenism is enhanced phagocytosis this enhanced ph phagocytosis is due to the immune hypertrophy and is seen in different chronic infections uh, and this increased phagocytosis is uh, maybe due to uh, upregulation of different cytokines and these cytokines are the monocyte colon stimulating factors with human necrosis factor beta uh, uh, interferons uh, and the interleukin in different interleukins which ultimately convert the monocytes to macrophages and they also uh, stimulate the homing of the monocytes to the monocytes to, towards the spleen and there is increased activation of these macrophages which causes this causes the enhanced phagocytosis 
of the red cells causing cyto of the, of the different uh, blood cells causing cytopenias gene this this regulation has also been implicated in uh, different aspects of hyperspinism where the activ activation of different genes like the s phase kinase uh, the nf kappa b and the mtor pathways there there are also um, uh, there is also literature uh, literature on uh, the increased activation of the mrnas which are responsible for uh, coding the different pattern recognition receptors and tool like receptors on the macrophages which ultimately uh, causes the increased mac macrophage activation and enhanced phag phagocytosis the clinical lab features the clinical features uh, uh, will be splenomegaly there will be early satiety sagging pain and uh, there will be shoulder pain due to irritation of the phrenic nerves and uh, the laboratory features there will but uh, there can be significant cytopenias which may require uh, definitive treatment and even spinectomy may also be required in certain cases so, in, um, so just to um, describe some diseases uh, although i will not be able to uh, go through all the diseases so some of the diseases i will try to cover the hereditary hemolytic anemias uh, they are associated with hyperspinism mainly due to inherent defect in the red cells itself so when there is defect in the red cell itself there will be uh, uh, increased uh, de destruction of these uh, red cells in the spleen and there will be cytopenias so uh, cytopenias and there will be the, uh, anemias so uh, in hereditary spherocytosis there, there is mainly a defect in the membrane proteins uh, this uh, membrane proteins um, are mainly anchorin, spectrin, or band 3 proteins or the uh, protein 4.2. Uh, so, what happens is that these cells, when they are uh, formed, uh, the, the, uh, when they are uh, formed, so during formation, these cells are normally biconcave in shape, but uh, certain parts of the cells they will. Um, uh, sorry, so certain. Uh, uh, certain parts of this uh, uh, membrane they, they are unsupported by this anchorin and spectrin and as they pass through the skin these unsupported membranes they are uh, uh, taken off and knocked off by the uh, skin and as as this cell have multiple passes uh, passes through the splenic microcirculation so what will happen this uh, these cells will increasingly lose some of their membranes which are unsupported supported and will uh, acquire a spherical shape a uh, spherical shape so for a particular uh, uh, volume the surface area will decrease as these cells they acquire a spherical shape they will be unable to pass through the fenestrated venous sinuses and they will be trapped in this sp spinic reticulum of this uh, spinic cords and they will be destroyed so there will be increased extra uh, uh, extravascular hemolysis and the clinical features will be hemolytic anemia with jaundice and splenomegaly. The treatment will be uh, splenectomy in severe cases. Although in most of the cases, uh, there can be mild to moderate anemias, which can be compensated. And uh, other defects are the hereditary electrocytosis or the ovalocytosis and the different enzyme defects. Uh, uh, enzyme defects like the G6P deficiency or the pyruvate kinase deficiencies. In hereditary hemolytic anemia, thalassemia is a very important cause where uh, there is hyperspinism. This hyperspinism is, uh, is also mainly due to the, the uh, reduced lominger synthesis. So, this um, hyperspinism is secondary to this uh, inherent defects in the red cell in the production of this red cell uh, components. There is reduced lominger synthesis the, uh, in the uh, alpha thalassemia there is usually gene deletion uh, whereas in beta thalassemia and uh, there is point mutation so what happens is that uh, in beta thalassemia usually which present as beta thalassemia major uh, which are more, more important to discuss here the pathophysiology is there is excess of alpha ch alpha chains uh, which are deposited and which form clumps and these alpha chains uh, uh, this excess of alpha chains they are precipitated uh, they are precipitated uh, and they call cell membrane damage so this uh, cell membrane da damage they cause the premature destruction of the uh, erythroid precursors in the bone marrow 
and there is ineffective erythropoiesis. There is also increased uh, the, in, uh, this alpha chains form red cell inclusions uh, in the red cells and they undergo increased hemolysis in the skin and due to this ineffective erythropoiesis and the increased hemolysis there is ultimately anemia in, uh, in beta thalassemia uh, major so to compensate for this anemia there is extra, extra medullary hematopoiesis and due to increased erythropoietin drive and ultimately there is uh, splenomegaly there is massive splenomegaly and uh, there can be uh, and uh, this massive splenomegaly will cause the uh, hypersplenism by increased trapping of these red cells so the clinical features will be anemia there will be hepatosplenomegaly as i had said there will be bone changes mainly uh, and there will be uh, increased susceptibility to infections the treatment will be blood transfusion because this blood transfusion this this shuts off the erythropoietin uh, drive and will prevent uh, the extramedullary hematopoiesis which will decrease the screen size and uh, with blood transfusion um, the iron chelation is very important splenectomy uh, in uh, the thalassemia beta thalassemia major uh, uh, is a relative indication it's not an absolute indication it should be considered if there is massive uh, splenomegaly and uh, if there is worsening anemia resulting in growth failure if there is massive splenomegaly with impending chances of rupture or there is hypersplenism causing uh, cytopenias only in those conditions a splenectomy should be considered because once splenectomy is done the child will be more susceptible to uh, infections so mm, splenectomy should be considered in certain cases where uh, the anemia is not being is there is a diffractory anemia which is not responding to treatment and in immune hemolytic anemia uh, uh, just an overview in immune hemolytic anemia it can be warm type or uh, cold type uh, this warm type uh, immune hemolytic anemia are main, mainly due to I IgG antibodies and uh, complement where there is extravascular uh, uh, hemolysis uh, due to destruction in the R R uh, in the skin and the cold type uh, uh, anti uh, cold type uh, immune hemolytic anemia they are because they are uh, there is mainly intravascular hemolysis rather than extravascular hemolysis as the IgM molecules they di uh, disperse away when uh, tem when the temp when the when they flow through the central system of the body where the temperature is mo uh, more than 30 degrees and the clinical feature is usually anemia jaundice and splenomegaly is seen in around 50 percent cases so this uh, the splenomegaly seen uh, in immune hemolytic anemia is mainly due to the warm antibody type of hemolytic anemia due to hyperfunctioning of the splenic macrophages due to uh, due to uh, igg and complement complement being uh, complement being bound to the uh, the uh, the antibodies they our complement being bound to the red cells and increased destruction in this thing. so the treatment in immune hemolytic anemia should also be uh, uh, to treat the cause high dose of steroids should be used there is also role of monoclonal antibodies uh, nowadays and splenectomy should be done if therapy fails and it's more uh, it's required mainly in the one type of um, immune hemolytic anemia and rarely uh, still uh, splenectomy should be the last uh, last retort and usually is not required in most of the cases in immune thrombocytic uh, thrombocytopenic purpura and uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura uh, uh, there can be splenomegaly although in itps this uh, splenomegaly is mm, uh, not often seen the spleen can be of normal size but there is hyperfunctioning of the spleen as uh, uh, there is uh, 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 igg antibodies formed against the platelet glycoproteins which which are uh, coat this uh, the, the different glycoproteins uh, these IEGs are mainly targeted against uh, and the glycoprotein GP2B3A or GP1B9. These IEG coated platelets, they, 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 when they enter into the clinic circulation, this the macrophages they uh, they have the FC receptors against the immunoglobulins. They identify these coated platelets and they, uh, they destroy these platelets. So there is macrophage activation also uh, uh, in these cases due to increased coating of the immunoglobulins to the uh, IgG to the platelet and 
the destruction of the uh, of, of the plate sets causing thrombocytopenia. So there is purpura bleeding manifestations. The treatment um, is mainly steroids and high dose of IVIGs, monoclonal antibodies, and different immunosuppressants like uh, vincristines or danazole or azathioprine. They are also uh, used. And splenectomy uh, usually uh, it's not required, but uh, Spinectomy may be considered if all these treatments they fail, and uh, it should be remembered that mm, uh, spinectomy should be mm, uh, should be avoided wherever possible in ITPs, and most of the uh, chronic ITPs they usually respond to these conventional uh, therapies. So uh, in from TTP there is deficiency of Adam TS thirteen metal proteases, and there is microangiopathic type of hemolytic anemia. Uh, TTPs can uh, can be due to uh, uh, can can be due to uh, acquired or a hereditary form where there is a genetic defect in Adam TS thirteen or there is acquired antibodies against uh, this Adam TS thirteen molecules. So usually treatment is plasmapheresis using FFPs. Spinectomy is rarely done. And now moving on. To uh, the congestive disorders like uh, cirrhosis and portal hypertension. So, uh, what happens in cirrhosis? The main mechanism for this hypersplenism and the splenomegaly is mainly congestive. So, uh, due to uh, due to portal hypertension in cirrhosis, there is uh, outflow obstruction and there is uh, congestion in the spleen, causing splenomegaly and the pooling of the red cells, uh, the pooling of the uh, blood elements in the spleen, causing Hyperspinism. So here also the hyperspinism is secondary to cirrhosis and portal hypertension. The mechanism, uh, as I had said, it is congestive uh, cause of hyperspinism. But uh, recent data and also there are studies which uh, uh, we, we, uh, which have speculated that this uh, hyperspinism in cirrhosis uh, or in liver disease is. Uh, not a passive, uh, not not a passive process. It is not secondary to uh, uh, congestion, but it, it, it is rather an active process in which there is altered hemodynamics and there is tissue injury in the tissue injury in form of liver disease. And this tissue injury there is in, uh, causes increased in inflammation and cytokine release. This cytokine release causes the active differential activation of the macrophages and the CD4 plus T cells. This uh, uh, cytokines also promote the transformation of the monocytes to the macrophages in the spleen. These macrophages uh, they engulf uh, more and more uh, RBCs, and this hyperactivation of the macrophages often leads to the cytopenias. So, in cirrhosis and portal hypertension, although the main mechanism is congestive, there can be uh, uh, active. There, there can be. Uh, increased cytokine release and inflammation, secondary to tissue injury, uh, that is the liver uh, liver injury, and increased activation of macrophages, which um, may, may cause this hyperspinism. Hyperspinism in relation to infiltrative diseases can be uh, in different malignant diseases or the non-malignant diseases. The malignant diseases uh, like uh, maybe the lymphomas, the minor proliferative disease like CML different histocytosis, whereas the non-malignant diseases are mainly the storage disorders uh, like Gaucher or Neiman pick diseases and in sarcoidosis, uh, the, um, where there is in a formation of diffuse infiltration by histocytes forming granulomas, it can lead to massive splenomegaly and the main mechanism of hyperspinism uh, in this infiltrative disorders is the widening of the splenic cords by the infiltration of the macrophages or the tumor cells. So as there is a widening of the splenic cords, the normal red cells, they will be trapped, uh, the, the normal blood elements will be trapped, which will cause peripheral cytopenias. And it should all also be borne in mind, borne in mind that uh, in these infiltrative diseases, the cause of cytopenias <laughs> is, not, is not always uh, due to the widening of the splenic cord or the splenic cause. It can also be due to infiltration uh, by these uh, by these cells. For example, the infiltration of storage cells into into the bone marrow, or uh, in different lymphomas or the uh, myeloproliferative disorders, there is uh, bone marrow infiltration because there is increased uh, production of these uh, hematopoietic cells, 
uh, and the uh, infiltration of the storage cells, which can ultimately decrease the uh, erythropoiesis and they decrease the hematopoiesis and can cause cytopenias. So uh, this this unique aspect of uh, cytopenias in infiltrative diseases is due to mainly the widening of the splenic cords with uh, trapping of the normal blood elements. So splenectomy uh, uh, in uh, infiltrative diseases like Gaucher's uh, should only be considered if there is massive splenomegaly and there is increased risk of rupture. Infections, uh, hypersplenism uh, can also be seen in uh, different uh, chronic infections or chronic inflammatory disorders. The chronic infections, uh, uh, among this chronic infection, there is a condition called tropical splenomegaly syndrome in which uh, the recurrent infections with malaria in endemic zones uh, causes uh, increased activation of the macrophages and there is uh, massive splenomegaly. Uh, causing uh, entrapment, entrapment of the cellular elements in, uh, of the blood elements in the spleen, causing cytopenias. And uh, in tropical splenomegaly syndrome, usually IgM is raised and the malarial antibody is positive, although there are no constitutional symptoms or parasitemia. And usually the treatment is anti malarials like chloroquine or pro one. Chronic hepatitis B and chronic uh, hepatitis C uh, they may cause portal hypertension and can cause uh, splenomegaly and hypersplenism by uh, by congestive mechanism in which there is outflow obstruction. Cystosomiasis can cause portal obstruction. And there are also some reports that some certain fungal infection can also lead to splenomegaly and hypersplenism. non cirrhotic portal fibrosis, uh, 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 it is uh, also known as idiopathic portal hypertension or pre sinusoidal portal hypertension. Usually the onset is in second to third decade. The cases of non cirrhotic portal fibrosis can be associated with cyto cytopenias, mainly uh, due to idiopathic portal hypertension. There is a recurrent bacterial infection, uh, 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 and there is when uh, it may be due to chronic arsenic use or due to post chemotherapy like met methotic fixate uh, or az azathioprine. Liver biopsy will only show periportal fibrosis. There will be no cirrhosis, uh, and uh, hypersplenism is seen in uh, about 60 to 90 percent of the cases of non cirrhotic portal fibrosis. And splenomegaly is universally present in all cases of NCPF. Treatment is usually conservative or uh, different chance surgeries. Some other rare causes of hypersplenism are they mainly due to immune hyperplasia of the spleen, as uh, seen in uh, Feldy syndrome which is nothing but the triad of rheumatoid arthritis, splenomegaly and neutropenia. Hypersplenism can also be seen in uh, myelofibrosis due to primary, uh, which can be primary or secondary uh, due to other different diseases. Uh, there, there, there is usually variable cytopenias and a rare cause of hypersplenism which deserves mention is the acute hypersplenism which is seen in sickle cell anemia. So what happens in uh, the children, uh, in patients with uh, sickle cell disease in very early phase, within uh, three months to, it mainly manifests in three months to two years of age. So there is a rapid sequestration crisis in which the sickle cells, they uh, the, the cells when this, uh, the, um, the sickle cells, the cells which contain the abnormal sickle hem uh, type of uh, hemoglobin, they, uh, they when they enter into the uh, screen, they undergo uh, oxidative stress and they are rapidly sickle. And uh, this sickle causes uh, uh, entram rapid sequestration and uh, entrapment into the uh, screen, causing a sequestration crisis with rapid increase in screen size and uh, a rapid hemoglobin drop of more than 2 gram per dl, causing uh, hypovolemic shock. So, this is most common in, uh, in the uh, early ages, uh, within 6 months to 5 years of age and uh, more than 75% cases occur in less than 2 years uh, of age. The treatment, uh, it should be treated as a medical emergency by oxygen fluids and it's a transfusion. So, this acute hypersplenism uh, which is seen in sickle cell anemia. Uh, uh, th th that uh, should be kept in mind when there is acute uh, sequestration crisis in a child. 
and splenectomy if there the, are the repeated uh, recurrences of uh, this uh, rapid sequestration crisis it should be considered there are also reports of hypersplenism uh, associated with uh, uh, associated and uh, in relation to stem cell transplantation there are some papers uh, and some literature where uh, the effects of spleen status on early outcomes uh, have been uh, assayed uh, after hematopoietic stem, stem cell transplantation and it has been seen that the patients who undergo hematopoietic stem cell transplantation and uh, the patients with who have splenomegaly usually uh, usually there is uh, delayed uh, stem cell engraftment and more chances of graft versus host disease and this is mainly due to uh, the increased activity of the spleen due to activation of the macrophages uh, and also there, there, are, there is one article where um, uh, the enlarged spleen is associated with a low neutrophil and platelet engraftment rates and there is poor survival after the stem cell transplantation uh, this is mainly due to the hyperactive spleen and uh, the uh, hyperactivation of the macrophages which causes delayed in engraftment. So, so hypersplenism, uh, as I had said, it can occur in, a, in different conditions and it is usually secondary. It is very rarely primary in less than 10% of the cases. So for a workup of hypersplenism, first the primary thing should be the workup for the uh, for the etiology so uh, as 90 more than 90 percent of the cases are secondary we have to do a etiological workup to find out whether um, we can find any primary cause so at first we have to do a usg and a uh, lft uh, and uh, we, we have to do different coagulation tests to see whether there is any portal hypertension the the liver cause has to be excluded first so uh, if there is portal hypertension, the hypersplenism is mainly congestive and it can be due to cirrhosis or it can be due to thrombosis of the portal uh, of, of the portal vein or the splenic vein or the hepatic vein. If there is a, if there is systemic or constitutional symptoms associated with cytopenias and, and splenomegaly, so we have to uh, look for infections. We have to exclude uh, whether there is an infiltrative, infiltrative disease or we have to look for immune uh, diseases like the, the different types of uh, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or uh, SLE and uh, infiltrative disease we can do workup for uh, to exclude if there is any malignant disease or a non-malignant disease this storage diseases um, usually are the non-malignant infiltrative causes of hypersplenism and the malignant diseases may be lymphomas, leukemias, and myeloproliferative neoplasms. Apart from this, if there are blood smear abnormalities uh, upfront, for example, if there are uh, increased number of nucleated RBCs, or there are increased number of fragmented cells, or uh, target cells, or tear drop cells, so in diseases or diseases. We have to, if there are blood smear abnormalities, we have to exclude the hematological diseases like the thalassemia, spherocytosis, and uh, sickle cell diseases. And we have to do relevant investigations to find out the cause of hypersplenism. So management of hypersplenism, first we have to ascertain whether there is uh, true hypersplenism. So in most of the cases, as the hypersplenism is secondary to some primary disease, so primary, so we, we should first treat the etiology. The, uh, if there is infection, medical management should be done. The relevant uh, the uh, drugs should be used. Some antibiotics should be used to treat the infections. If there is portal hypertension, the shunts uh, can uh, can be uh, treatment of choice. In liver diseases, medical management of the underlying liver disease should be done. In case of storage diseases, um, uh, the storage diseases, the medical management should be enzyme. Uh, replacement uh, therapy, although it is not feasible and not available everywhere. If there is extramural hematopoiesis, then we have to treat the ineffective erythro. Uh, we have to treat the uh, ineffective hematopoiesis by blood transfusion and all. And we have to also ascertain uh, whether uh, we are uh, truly dealing with the hypersplenism or the hypersplenism is secondary to some other. 
causes of cytopenias like a bone marrow suppression for example they, if there is a bone marrow suppression so that it can be excluded by a bone marrow study where we will find if we find a normal a normal or cellular marrow and uh, peripheral cytopenia we have to uh, then it is hyperspinism if there is a bone marrow suppression hypoplastic marrow then it is possibly uh, due to some the cytopenia is not due to the spin it's due to some other cause drug history should also be uh, taken into account because there are certain drugs uh, which can cause bone marrow suppression and hence can cause peripheral cytopenias and also we have to evaluation we have to evaluate the primary etiologies so then uh, after evaluation of the primary etiology uh, we have to assess the severity of hyperspinism so uh, if uh, usually in most cases the hyperspinism uh, associated uh, causing cytopenias is usually moderate and it's usually asymptomatic in these cases a con in these cases uh, conservative treatment uh, of the cause should be done if it, there is symptomatic uh, hyperspinism causing uh, severe uh, cytopenia or cytopenias then um, um, conservative management should be first uh, um, conservative management should be uh, used with supportive therapy and the basis should uh, all the treatment uh, should always be focused on to avoid spinectomy and if at all there, there is uh, uh, there is symptoms persisting or there is refractory cytopenias and uh, and uh, and a clinical assessment clinical and laboratory assessment uh, should be done in all cases uh, to uh, to see whether this uh, hyperspinism is mainly due to the hyperactive spin so in those cases the spinectomy uh, should be done along with vaccination which is mandatory uh, in all spinectomized patients so spinectomy it should be deferred uh, until 5 to 6 years of age because in uh, uh, in early uh, childhood there is there is increased risk of this uh, of this infect different types of infections more due to the encapsulated organisms because uh, the immune system and the immune uh, setup of the body is not yet complete and the immune setup is not uh, not yet developed uh, like adults so it should be deferred to prevent the life threatening uh, uh, infections the indications should be uh, weighted whether it's a, it should be consider whether there are absolute indications or the indications are relative so absolute indications are the traumatic rupture of the spleen or the splenic tumors and the cysts which, uh, which are interfering with the functions rest all uh, all the uh, rest of the indications are relative for example in trans transfusion dependent hemolytic anemias and uh, thalassemias the primary objective should be uh, to prevent splenectomy and the ineffective erythropoiesis should be and the extramedullary hematopoiesis should be counteracted by uh, repeated blood transfusions and proper blood transfusion can ameliorate and prevent splenectomy at an early age in hereditary spherocytosis uh, if uh, the anemia is mild to moderate usually splenectomy is not required but if uh, there is severe worsening anemia uh, splenectomy may be considered uh, in immune thrombocytopenias, usually uh, splenectomy uh, is not done, uh, and the conservative treatment with steroids or uh, intravenous immunoglobulins are uh, mostly effective in controlling ITPs. In storage disorders, uh, if there is there is massive splenomegaly with hyperspinism and uh, associated cytopenias, it uh, splenectomy may be considered and other, in other causes of uh, secondary hyperspinism the underlying primary etiology should be evaluated and the um, splenectomy will, uh, should be considered likewise so complications of splenectomy the complications are uh, maybe immediate that is surgery related it can be uh, bleeding due to surgery related complications uh, it can be pancreatic complications uh, as during you know, splenectomy there can be uh, injury to pancreas causing pancreatitis there can be abscess or pseudocyst formation there can be post-operative thrombocytosis now as i had said that spleen is a reservoir of platelet about 30 to 40 percent of the normal uh, platelet uh, pool is this is stored in the spleen so when the, uh, there is when we when we 
and perform the splenectomy, there can be immediate post-operative thrombocytosis and the platelet counts can raise up to 15 lakh per cubic millimeter. So in th these cases, uh, uh, aspirin, uh, the use of aspirin treatment has been uh, has been uh, has been said to be of some value, although it is not used routinely. And thrombosis and embolism, uh, portal venous thrombosis can, uh, can also occur due to uh, can also occur as an immediate complication of splenectomy, in which anticoagulant should be uh, used and. Uh, there can be lymphocytosis and monocytosis along with thrombocytosis uh, in the patient which can also persist lifelong. The risk of infection, the early risk of infection or infection with staphylococcus or gram-negative bacilli. But what we are more concerned with is the late uh, complication of in infections by different encapsulated organisms. As I had said, that the spleen has a specialized marginal zone which is rich in the marginal zone B cells which are the spe specialized cells for against this uh, encapsulated uh, bacteria and uh, also the spleen, uh, the marginal zone of the spleen has the specialized macrophages which are the uh, which are also involved in the innate immunity uh, through different uh, pattern recognition receptors and the toll like receptors so when we uh, when we have done a spinectomy uh, the individual is susceptible to infections by these encapsulated organisms which can cause life threatening infection which is known as opsi opsi or the overwhelming post spinectomy infections and there can be uh, auto transplantation uh, during spinning surgery in which uh, some part of the spin spinic tissue may uh, may be left behind in the may be left behind which can uh, cause recurrence of the uh, disease for which this pain has been operated now <coughs> a word on uh, overwhelming overwhelming post infections it is inversated age that means uh, it's as the age increases the chances of opsy decreases so this is the reason why uh, this spinectomy should be delayed at least up to five years of age, three five years of age. This uh, post spinectomy infections are mainly due to infections by the Streptococcus pneumoniae, nasal meningitis, and the Haemophilus influenzae bacteria, which are all encapsulated organisms. And uh, after a spin is removed, uh, the Protect, the protective function uh, of uh, of the body against this encapsulated organism is lost, so there is increased susceptibility to these organisms. Although um, uh, these infections may also be caused by other um, organisms like the E. coli, Staph, or Streptococcus. Now, the pathophysiology, as I had said, it is mainly due to depletion of the IgM memory B cells uh, present in the marginal zone, and there is compromised humoral immunity due to depletion of these cells, and also there is the, uh, there is absence of the uh, innate immune system uh, of, of the innate immunity conferred by the uh, specialized macrophages present in the splenic marginal zone. So uh, there is also inadequate complement factors that is decrease uh, the uh, depleted levels of propartin, tafsin, or factor B because the spleen uh, is involved in the production of this complement factors and. The clinical features of this condition is there will be fever and there will be upper death, uh, it may start with fever or upper respiratory infection and it can quickly develop into sepsis, shock with DIC and organ failures and there can be deaths as high as 50, uh, in 50 to 90% of the cases. So identification of these infections is important and to prevent this uh, overwhelming infections, the triad of vaccination proper patient education and antibiotic prophylaxis should be considered in all splenectomy patients. A vaccination, just uh, uh, overview, the, the, uh, as the, uh, the individuals are more susceptible to infection by these three types of organisms, the, the pneumococcal infections, the hemophilus and the meningococcal infection. So vaccine, vaccination uh, against pneumococcus, uh, that can be a pneumococcal polysaccharide uh, vaccine 23 that is ppb 23 or the conjugated vaccine 30 and it, uh, and along with combined uh, hemophilus meningococcal conjugate vaccine that should be given at least two weeks prior to splenectomy to raise a uh, to mount the immune response against 
uh, these organisms um, uh, by this means and after two weeks uh, splenectomy should be done revaccination uh, after uh, f five years by uh, of, by pneumococcal vaccine should be considered uh, considered although uh, uh, some clinicians they prefer to see pneumococcal antibody levels before considering uh, the vaccination and all this patient all these patients should also be given influenza vaccines because in, uh, influenza vaccines uh, because influenza virus uh, makes uh, infection with influenza uh, is usually associated with secondary bacterial infections. So annual uh, uh, vaccination by uh, this, uh, influ uh, annual vaccination of influenza should be given to all individuals. In children less than uh, two years, uh, there uh, there should be uh, complete vaccination should be given along with uh, hemophilus uh, and meningococcal conjugate and PCV thirteen at uh, month zero and later after the second birthday, uh, hemophilus and meningococcal vaccine along with PVB twenty three should be considered. Uh, in uh, children who are two to five years with incomplete vaccination, uh, the first dose of pneumococcal vaccine conjugate vaccine 13 along with uh, hemophilus meningococcal conjugate vaccine should be given along with uh, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine uh, 13 second dose at uh, two, two after two months and uh, pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine should also be given and the, the children below two years two to five years uh, with complete vaccination should be given a uh, booster of hemophilus meningococcal vaccine along with Pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine 23 and revaccination should be done for this polysaccharide vaccine 23. Quadribine vaccine uh, of AC, ACWY vaccine uh, against meningococcus and hemophilus uh, should may be considered at uh, one month of, uh, after surgery, although this is variable. Antibiotic prophylaxis should be given to all these patients undergoing splenectomy. Uh, penicillin uh, or erythromycin may be uh, considered mainly in children uh, in a dose of 250 mg BD. Preemptive antibiotics, uh, that is an uh, uh, antibiotic prescription of amoxicillin or levoclosacin should be given to the patient and the patient should be educated for potential uh, potential uh, for, for conditions where there, there may be infection where uh, the patient can himself uh, start on this PMT antibiotics before seeking medical therapy, medical attention, and the uh, use of antibody pro prophylaxis that can be stratified uh, and high risk patients uh, who uh, who are less than 16 years of age or aged patients or with inadequate serological response or history of prior invasive pneumococcal disease, they, they should be uh, mandatorily given antibody prophylaxis. The, Patients who do not have this these factors should be should be counselled uh, for uh, the risk of these infections and should uh, always seek medical attention uh, if there are any uh, episodes of any infection in these individuals. So, as we have discussed splenectomy, now let's move on to hypospinism. So, hypospinism splenectomy is uh, most important cause for asthenia that is lack of a spleen so first the definitions what is asthenia asthenia means there is lack of a spleen so this lack of a spleen may be congenital in complex congenital heart diseases or dextrocardia a spleen may be completely absent so that is a uh, that is a congenital cause of asthenia and surgical removal or splenectomy uh, is the uh, cause of asthenia in older individuals or individuals who have undergone uh, oh, oh, spleen removal. Functional asthenia is due to complete loss of splenic function. It uh, in the functional asthenia, the spleen may be present, but the, the, there will be complete loss of splenic uh, function, and it, it can be seen in uh, sickle cell diseases, sickle cell anemia mainly, in which there are repeated uh, uh, repeated infarctions and infarctions causes uh, atrophy of the spleen and uh, there can be presence of spleen, but there will be complete loss of uh, splenic function. And hypospinism means a partial loss of splenic function in which uh, the underlying diseases they cause uh, 
decreased function of the spleen. So this is functional hypospleenism. The causes of hypospleenism, different hematolo-oncological diseases can cause hypospleenism, of which sickle cell disease is the most important cause of hypospleenism. Uh, uh, in the previous section of hypospleenism, I, I, uh, I had uh, described how uh, acute sequestration crisis uh, of, of the sickle red cells in the spleen can cause uh, uh, hypovolemia and rapid drop in hemoglobin causing sequestration crisis and uh, splenomegaly with hyperspleenism. But in most cases of sickle cell anemia, there is usually repeated uh, infarct due to uh, obstruction by the sickle cell in the splenic vasculature causing uh, splenic atrophy and uh, finally there can be auto splenectomy. So sickle cell anemia and sickle cell disease is a very important cause of uh, hypospleenism and asplenia. Uh, leukemia lymphomas usually uh, uh, in the early phase they can present with hypersplenism because they, they increase the uh, splenic reticulum and uh, they can cause cytopenias but in la late form of the disease where there is diffuse infiltration uh, of the skin by the uh, by the leukemic cells or the, or the uh, lymphomas infiltration there will be uh, disruption of the normal spinning architecture and there will be decreased function of the skin causing hypospinism. Hepatic disorders, portal hypertension and cirrhosis. Mm. Uh, usually there is hyperspinism but it, uh, it can also, also cause hy hypospinism because uh, uh, in portal hypertension and cirrhosis uh, there is increased uh, chances of infections and uh, as I had said that there is uh, um, uh, the, 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 there are different active mechanisms where in cirrhosis and portal hypertension where there is increased macrophage activation there can be reticular endothelial uh, uh, the reticular endothelial block in which the over functioning of this um, of this clinic white pulp can often lead to dampened uh, responses to uh, different infections and increases chances of infections and may cause hypospinism Alcoholic liver disease and autoimmune hepatitis, they can cause uh, hypospinism. Alcohol, it has been postulated that alcohol has direct toxic injuries to the spheric macrophages and uh, also the acid, uh, the acetaldehyde, acetyl, acetaldehyde uh, adducts uh, which are formed in, in chronic alcoholic patients, they are engulfed by the macrophages uh, causing uh, saturation of these uh, spheric macrophages. Uh, causing hypospinism and decreased uh, uh, protective function of the skin. In autoimmune hepatitis, uh, there, there are, form there are uh, formation of in uh, antigen antibody complexes which, which are then uh, taken up by the splenic macrophages and they can cause a reticular endothelial block and hence cause hypospinism. Different autoimmune diseases, they can cause hypospinism by increased <laughs> formation of antigen antibody complexes which are then taken up by the spleen and there can be depletion of the effective uh, uh, immune cells mainly the macrophages and can cause hypospinism. GI, GI disease disorders I will discuss in detail. Uh, it, it, is, it is an important cause of hypospinism but celiac diseases and IBDs mainly outside polarities are associated with hypospinism through um, three different uh, mechanisms uh, infections can also cause hypospinism circulatory disorders uh, like splenic or celiac artery thrombosis can uh, cause decreased blood flow to the spleen and ultimately cause uh, uh, splenic uh, atrophy and cause hypospinism miscellaneous diseases sarcoidosis uh, usually uh, in the early uh, in the early phases of disease there is hyperspinism due to uh, due to uh, increased expansion of the splenic uh, reticulum cells with, trap, with trapping of this uh, of these blood cells but in later form of the diseases where there is diffuse infiltration of the uh, spleen by the histiocytes and granulomas there will be changes in this clinic archi normal architecture and this will cause the decreased functioning of this spleen. Amyloidosis is an important cause of uh, spleno splenomegaly and hypospinism. In amyloidosis there is extracellular deposition of amyloid in the splenic parenchyma this uh, extracellular uh, amyloid deposition will cause a massive splenomegaly and will also cause hepatomegaly but uh, as this, this depo deposition is there in the extracellular component the it will oh, uh, it will uh, result in 
uh, atrophy of the splenic red pulp and the white pulp and ultimately cause uh, hyposplenism. Define radiations and steroid therapy. The uh, radiations can cause hyposplenism by, by causing the splenic damage, damage to the splenic parenchyma and steroid therapy causes hyposplenism by, uh, by inhibiting the uh, neutrophils and the macrophages and decreasing the screening function causing hyposplenism. So <clears throat> what are the results of hyposplenism? The first important result of hyposplenism will be dysfunction of the immune homeostasis. So as I had said that the screen is involved in the uh, immune and protective function. So in hyposplenism there will be, there will be decreased uh, function of the macrophages and the different uh, lymphocytes and there will be uh, there will be increased susceptibility to infections there will be increased the increased risk to, of vascular events uh, like thrombosis and embolism why because of two two causes firstly as i had said that the spleen is the uh, these are, uh, is the reservoir of different drug components namely mainly the platelets and one third of the platelets are stored in the spleen so when there will be hypospleenism uh, or there can be uh, spin, uh, there can be aspenia due to spinectomy. There will be increased uh, migration of this uh, thrombocytes and increased flow of this in this thrombo uh, these platelets into the circulation. This increased platelets into the, into the circulation will uh, lead to, will predispose the patient to increased vascular events and also. Uh, in uh, different, uh, in, uh, if there is underlying hemolytic diseases, this uh, and splenectomy uh, has been done. So the damaged uh, red cells, they will, uh, they, 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 they will go into the circulation and they will, uh, they, they, they will ca cause ultimately blockade uh, in the different uh, in this in the uh, microvasculature causing activation of the platelets and ultimately causing thrombosis. The senescent RBCs and the aged RBCs, as I had said, that uh, they, they are normally removed by the spleen and uh, by the splenic macrophages, but in cases of hypospleenism, so these the damaged senescent RBCs, they will uh, enter into the uh, circulation and they will call uh, they, they, uh, these damaged RBCs, they, they, they will cause, they, they will be trapped in the different uh, um, uh, micro different areas of micro circulation and uh, by by activation of the platelets they will cause different thrombotic events the derangement of the uh, filtration function uh, although this is not a result of hypo, uh, although this is not a uh, not of clinical importance still uh, the dysfunction rbcs of the red cell inclusions will be present in the circulation and we, we, which will be picked up uh, during routine microscopy and manifestations the manifestation of uh, hypospinism so that will depend on the severity of this uh, of the decrease in splenic function in asthenia or, or uh, due to autosplenectomy or autosplenectomy in sickle cell disease or in uh, after surgical removal, uh, there will there will be massive bacteremia by encapsulated organisms. Although um, the chances of this massive bacteremia is less in uh, patients in which the splenic function is uh, function uh, is uh, mildly decreased, there will be no obvious. Uh, uh, so uh, the patients with marked hypospinism will be susceptible to massive bacteremia. As I had said, there will be. No, uh, no obvious primary source of infection and after a short non-specific prodromal phase these patients can uh, can quickly move on to uh, qu quickly deteriorate to septic shock or DIC and uh, they, they, there will also be chances of bilateral adrenal hemorrhage uh, or the Waterhouse Fetixen syndrome due to meningococcemia and this uh, degree uh, the factors uh, which will uh, the factors which will mainly dictate whether uh, the manifestations of this hypospinism will be mild or will be severe. It will be on the degree or severity of the uh, loss of splenic function. It will be on the. It will depend on the underlying etiology and also the age at which a spleen is removed. Uh, so, uh, children less than five years of age, they will be more susceptible to this type of massive bacteremic bacteremia and infection by encapsulated organisms. Whereas adults, they will usually have a milder diseases.
so hematological changes uh, in hypospinism and uh, after splenectomies the rbcs uh, we will find these different uh, bodies different uh, uh, inclusions in the red cells the how will jolly bodies they are the nuclear remnants present uh, uh, in the rbcs it will be uh, found in uh, in um, most cases and uh, in most individuals in uh, the, uh, how jolly bodies will be uh, detected Heinz bodies. Heinz bodies are the hemoglobin, the denatured hemoglobin, hemoglobin fragments which uh, which will be found in the red cells. Pappenheimer bodies. They are the sclerotic granules which will be present in the red cells. Acanthocytes or the speculated cells will be will be numerous, and uh, the target cells. Target cells will be present uh, in the peri peri in the peripheral smears, and. And all the, the presence of all these bodies they, that will, um, as I said, will depend on the degree of the hypospinism uh, that is present. The MCB hemoglobin is usually normal. WBCs there will be increased total counts in splenectomized patients. There will be uh, the counts may be increased up to fifteen thousand, uh, ten to fifteen thousand, uh, and in patients with milder forms of hypospinism, the counts may even be normal. Lymphocytes are usually raised. Uh, uh, in more than forty percent of the cases, and uh, sorry, lymphocytes will be raised. The differential count of lymphocytes will be more more than forty percent per percent, and also there there can be increase in monocyte and eosinophil differential count. Uh, usually, it is moderate, and the differential count of monocytes and eosinophil will may be uh, as high as twenty percent. Basophils may also be raised in the peripheral circulation, but usually the differential count is less than. C person, platelets uh, post-operatively uh, in post-splenectomy patients, the platelets may be markedly increased. Uh, it may be more than 15 lakhs in the immediate post-operative period, for which uh, treatment by aspirin or by anticoagulants may be considered. Uh, whereas uh, in long-term cases, mainly splenectomized patients, there will be persistent increase in platelet count, and in up to 40 to 50 percent of the cases. Uh, platelet count will be persistently more than 4 lakhs. So this, this is a peripheral the different uh, red cell inclusions which are usually found in hypos uh, in hypospinism and the uh, splenectomized patients. These are the nuclear remnants which are the Howell Jolly bodies which can be picked up in normal uh, Leishman stain smears. Uh, these are the <coughs> denatured hemoglobin uh, particles uh, or fragments which are the Heinz bodies, they are usually not, uh, they, they, they cannot be identified in routine uh, blood smears stained by dispensin and uh, supravital st stains like uh, new methylene blue is required for identification of the Heinz bodies. Papenhemer bodies, these are the serrative granules which are more granular, uh, these are the serrative gra granules which are also found in red cells and there will be increased number of the speculated cells or the acanthocytes which are normally removed by this screen, but they, uh, they escape uh, into the peripheral circulation in cases of uh, hypospinism and uh, in definitely in cases of splenectomized patients. So hypospinism in sickle cell disease, uh, it has to be uh, discussed in detail. In sickle cell disease, uh, the, uh, these, these cells they are normally biconcave in uh, shape, but in, uh, when they pass through, uh, through the uh, screen, they, they, they are subjected to oxidative stress. And uh, during this oxidative stress, the sickle cells, they get denatured and they uh, bind to one another, uh, forming the, this classical H, HBS polymers. So this increase, this sickle cells, they get trapped uh, into the venous sinusoids and they can cause this uh, sequestration uh, different types of crisis the sequestration crisis which is uh, which i had discussed in the hyperspinism segment uh, it is an acute crisis which occurs due to this uh, uh, sequestration and the uh, and acute trapping of this uh, sickle red cells within the uh, spleen causing uh, rapid enlargement in the size of the spleen with ra rapid entrapment of the uh, blood elements causing Acute hypovolemia and shock. The, vacu uh, the vaso occlusive crisis. Vaso occlusive crisis is due to the uh, the, entra uh, the entrapment of the sickle cells uh, 
into the uh, vasculature and uh, into the splenic uh, this uh, entrapment of this uh, different sickle cells in the uh, skin will cause will cause uh, infarction and over uh, multiple over long long term the, the spleen will ultimately undergo atrophy and will be smaller in size and ultimately will undergo autosplenectomy where uh, with majority of the splenic function is lost and the other crisis are the hemolytic crisis the hemolytic crisis are mainly due to uh, the increased hemolysis of the red cells and the aplastic crisis uh, where there is a uh, associated bone marrow uh, suppression due to associated infection mainly by parvovirus b19 viruses so in uh, sickle cell disease uh, the there can be hyperspinism followed by hypospinism and the mechanism of this hypospinism in sickle cell disease is mainly due to diversion terms as i had said there is uh, infarction of this splenic vasculature and there will be formation of different shunts and uh, uh, there will be reticuloendothelial block. The reticuloendothelial block will be there because there will be increased trapping of the sickle cells in the spin. And this increased number of sickle cells, they will be entrapped. Uh, they, they will be entrapped in the spinic uh, cords of uh, the reticulum, the spinic cord, cords. And the macrophages, these macrophages will engulf more and more sickle cells. And ultimately, these macrophages will be saturated with sickle cells. And there will be features of hypospinism and there, there will be, uh, ultimately there will be uh, uh, decreases clinic function and there will be decreased production of the stuff and propardine uh, by the skin which can lead to uh, different infections in sickle cell disease so these are the mechanism of hypospinism in sickle cell disease so hypospinism in gi and liver disorders uh, this is also um, uh, well studied and the new numerous uh, uh, numerous articles are available uh, on the presence of hypospinism in different gi disorders mainly uh, the celiac disease and inflammatory bowel diseases so uh, hypospinism can be seen in different hepatic disorders that is in autoimmune liver diseases the primary biliary cholangitis alcoholic liver diseases celiac disease uh, has, uh, is associated with consistent forms of hypospinism uh, and Crohn's disease, tropical sprue or Whipple's disease can also cause hypospinism. Autoimmune gastritis and eosinophilic esophagitis is also speculated uh, to cause hypospinism and IBD is also associated with hypospinism. So ba basic mechanism behind hypospinism uh, in this GI disorders is due to three causes. Uh, three, uh, the the first cause is the reticuloendothelial blockade. The reticuloendothelial blockade is uh, due to increased circulating and uh, antigen antibody complexes in uh, uh, celiac disease and uh, and uh, celiac disease. So there will be increased uh, activity of the macrophages and these macrophages will, uh, will engulf more and more anti antibody complexes causing saturation and uh, depletion of this uh, macro macrophage pool of the uh, skin and, and th so there will be uh, increased risk of infections and uh, there will be hyposplenism. The, the other cause of uh, reticuloendothelial uh, blockade is because uh, because uh, in, in celiac disease and, in, and inflammatory bowel diseases, the main barrier immunity, that is the gut-related barrier uh, to the different uh, gut-related pathogens is lost. So more and more uh, pathogens, they enter into the blood circulation and they ultimately reach the skin. There is increased macrophage activation and this, um, these macrophages, uh, there will be increased function of the macrophages and these macrophages uh, will be more involved in countering uh, in counteracting these blood bone pathogens uh, which uh, come to the spleen which normally do not occur if there is an intact uh, barrier immunity of the gut so this is another form of reticuloendothelial blockade which will ca cause this hypospinism the other cause of hypospinism is reticuloendothelial atrophy which is caused due to increased lymphocyte egg egress 
uh, of uh, egress and failure of the uh, splenic lymphocyte recirculation. So what happens is that uh, in celiac disease, uh, in the histology, we have seen that in celiac disease, there is increased number of intraepithelial lymphocytes and there will be varial, vari uh, there will be variable amount of villus blunting and uh, crypt hyperplasia. And uh, as there is increased number of uh, uh, intraepithelial lymphocytes, it has been postulated that uh, there is increased uh, migration of these lymphocytes from the spleen into the uh, gut where uh, more and more migration of the uh, lymphocytes ultimately causes uh, atrophy of the re reticuloendothelial white pulp of the spleen and this causes the hypospleenism associated with uh, different GI disease, mainly celiac diseases. In inflammatory bowel disease also there is uh, increased number of uh, immune complexes as it, ha it, ha it has been thought that there, there, there is increased number of uh, immune complex formation in uh, IBDs, mainly ulcerative colitis, uh, causing reticuloendothelial blockade. And the third mechanism is splenic atrophy. So the cause, the main uh, pathogenesis behind splenic atrophy is not mm, known, although the possible uh, autoimmune phenomenon is uh, mainly, um, uh, the autoimmune phenomenon is likely to be uh, present, which leads to loss of specific, specific splenic regions. Mesenteric lymph node cavitation is another entity which is associated with hypospinism and is seen uh, in, in cases of hypospinism associated with celiac diseases in which there, there will be uh, cavitations formed in the intra-abdominal and mesenteric lymph nodes and it is also thought to be due to an autoimmune phenomenon leading to loss of lymph nodal regions. In chronic alcoholism, uh, it has been speculated that the hypospinism is mainly due to the direct toxic effect of the on the uh, macrophages, the acid uh, acetaldehyde adducts, uh, which are uh, derived from the alcohol, increased consumption of alcohol, form immune complexes, and uh, uh, they saturate the splenic macrophages. And associated nutritional deficiency deficiency also causes this hypospinism. Other diseases associated with hypospinism, I have already uh, mentioned uh, in the causes. Increased circulating immune complexes causing reticuloendothelial block in the autoimmune, different autoimmune diseases. Leukemia, lymphomas, sarcomas, they can cause uh, hypospinism uh, in the later stages where diffuse infiltration of the spleen by these uh, malignancies will cause splenic architecture disruption and decrease normal functioning of the skin. In HIV, uh, hypospinism may be due to direct effect of the virus or uh, the, uh, due to decreased uh, IgM memory B cells. And in amyloidosis, as I had said, that hypospinism is due to, uh, due to uh, the deposition of this amyloid in the skin, disrupting the normal splenic architecture and hence splenic function. Steroids can cause hypospinism by uh, by suppressing the macrophage and the phagocytic activity of the neutrophils. Aging is related with hypos is uh, also a co cause of hypospinism in which uh, there is usually atrophy of the splenic compartments as people age leading to hypospin. So there is a review article by Sabatino where they, uh, where they had reviewed this post phenectomy and different hypospinic states and uh, they, they, they had uh, uh, mentioned that they had uh, found out that the prevalence of hypospinism is uh, about 100 percent uh, of cases with sickle cell anemia. Uh, it's usually moderate in cases of bone marrow transplantation or celiac diseases where uh, around 50 percent of the cases uh, can have uh, hypospinism. In alcoholic liver disease or HIV or inflammatory bowel disease, around 30 to 40 percent uh, cases of uh, hypos uh, 30 for 40 percent cases have shown hypospinism. Hypospinism can also be seen in Whipple's disease or different autoimmune diseases. The degree of hypospinism will be, it will be more marked and uh, severe in cases of sickle cell anemia uh, because there will be a, uh, there will be autosplenectomy in the uh, patients of uh, sickle cell anemia. It's usually moderate to severe uh, in other diseases and usually. Uh, mild in uh, the people disease and 
in autoimmune diseases and so uh, the diseases where there is marked uh, moderate to marked degree of hypospinism these patients should be uh, educated uh, for uh, educated on the possibility of overwhelming uh, infections in this uh, and hence should be given preemptive uh, knowledge of use of antibiotics and should be advised to take uh, or seek medical attention in cases of uh, infection any type of infection or fever or something of that so assessment of hypospinism so um, uh, how to assess hypospinism uh, as i had said uh, hi in hyperspinism usually there is associated spinomegaly but in hypospinism uh, it is very difficult to uh, assess whether a patient has a hypospinism and uh, decreased splenic function so test may be hematological test or uh, imaging or nuclear scans so hematological test how will jolly bodies by routine staining if there are presence of uh, how will jolly bodies so the, the, that should be mentioned in the blood report and it should uh, it, it, it should it should always uh, alarm the clinician to look for any uh, underlying hypospinism so this how uh, how will jolly body should be the primary uh, investigation to assess hypospinism so if hypospinism is suspected in any patient so uh, the clinician should uh, order uh, or should uh, ask the pathologist to look for the howell jolly bodies and we as pathologists we, we should always uh, while seeing a blood smear we should be aware of these different rbc inclusions red cell inclusions like the howell jolly bodies and uh, the pappenheimer bodies so pre presence of numerous howell jolly bodies that should uh make us aware and that should be reported and that should be the that, that may be the primary uh, uh primary indicator for uh, any underlying hypospinism the other hematological test which had which has been uh, uh, con considered to be gold standard in different studies is the uh, is the finding of, of uh, pitted erythrocytes now the identification of the pitted erythrocytes is difficult uh, because it is uh, not seen by routine micros routine light microscopy and it requires interference contrast microscopy for identification so what are these pitted erythrocytes normally the erythrocytes uh, as the age uh, they will uh, they will show small vesicles under the uh, membrane uh, under their uh, rvc membrane so these vesicles are the cellular debris or the denatured hemoglobin which uh, appear beneath the vesicles uh, beneath this uh, RBC membrane in form of vesicles. So these vesicles are uh, or the pits are usually removed by the steam during the screening circulation by a process called the pitting, which I had discussed uh, uh, discussed in the beginning. So this pitting action of this uh, screen is lost in cases of hypospinism. So uh, as this pitting action, uh, pitting function is lost, so these vesicles will uh, will remain in the RBCs and they will coalesce to form small vacuoles or pits. These pits can be uh, picked up uh, uh, while uh, uh, picked up by interference contrast microscopy on a uh, wet preparation of the uh, blood. So more than four percent of uh, pitted erythrocytes is considered to be abnormal and is a uh, important indicator of hypospinism. And uh, in some studies, uh, it has been said that it is comparable to radioisotope methods uh, in identifying hypospinism. Imaging and nuclear scans. Uh, USG is uh, maybe a primary uh, modality for assessing hypospinism because USG. Uh, can identify uh, the splenic atrophy although it is a screening test uh, atrophic screens uh, can be picked up by usg uh, uh, but uh, uh, ultrasonography is usually a, uh, not a sensitive test for identifying hypospinism the other specific nuclear scans uh, are the specific test for hypospinism identification of hypospinism where technician level uh, sulfur colloidal scans or heat level uh, not a or technetium level heat damaged autologous RBC transfusion can be done for uh, assessment of hypospinism. Now, in technique, uh, technician in sulfur colloidal scan, the quanti quantitation of this uh, splenic uptake of the colloidal sulfur particles is assessed 
and the static assessment of the splenic function can uh, identify whether there is any underlying hyposplenism or not. The, uh, in the um, uh, technician level heat damaged uh, autologous RBC transfusion met method, the nuclear scan is used to identify the clearance rate of the RBCs. So this measurement of the clearance of the uh, heat damaged RBCs uh, allows the dynamic assessment of the spinning function and hence uh, the, if, uh, the, if, uh, the uh, presence of hypospinism can be picked up by uh, these scans. So as pathologists, uh, uh, although routinely not done, the identification of the splitted erythrocytes, uh, th th that should be known to us. So what, what is done here, uh, a blood sample, uh, it, it is fixed with 1% buffer tetraldehyde in 1 is to 5 ratio at a pH of 7.2. The wet suspension is placed on a slide. Uh, interference contrast microscopy can be used or normal skew opti optics with light microscopy can be used to identify these pits. Uh, in this figure, we can see three RBCs uh, with presence of this uh, pits or vacuoles in the uh, red cells. So presence of these pits in uh, more than 4% of the total circulating RBCs is an uh, indicator or is a determinant for identifying and documenting hypospinism. So for uh, documentation, uh, it has been advised that 2000 RBCs should be counted, although at least 5, 500 RBCs should be counted for making a percentage. So hypospinism, what should be primary approach of a uh, approach uh, towards hypospinism? The first uh, uh, the, the first indicator of hypospinism should be the presence of Havel Jolly bodies uh, if noted in a peripheral blood film. So, if Havel Jolly bodies are noted, we have to see whether functional hypospinism or asplenia uh, or, or asplenia is present or not. So, we can do a primary uh, screening ultrasonogram uh, to see whether uh, the screen is present or absent. So screen may, may be absent in case of congenital asplenia. Uh, if splenectomy is, uh, is, uh, has been done, uh, post-surgical post screen will be absent, although the, from the clinical history itself, we can uh, make out whether splenectomy has been done by taking the history of the patient. And if there is any splenic atrophy, that can also be picked up uh, in a screening ultrasonogram. So, uh, if there is uh, absence of spleen, so we can document that there is uh, as asplenia or uh, atrophic hypospinic, uh, hypos uh, hypospinic state, where we can proceed for uh, uh, where we can proceed as such and uh, give vaccination to the patient and empirical antibiotic therapy along with patient education. If uh, the hypospinia or not uh, or asplenia is uh, not there then we should uh, proceed as for um, functional hypospinism. So if spleen is present, but there is present, the presence of uh, Howell Jolly bodies uh, and pre increased number of pitted erythrocytes, so there is functional hypospinism. So in these cases, although it's not available everywhere and uh, it's a cumbersome procedure, uh, the nuclear scan should be done. Uh, if there is normal uptake, there is normal uh, splenic function and the other causes for abnormal RBC structure should be uh, uh, should be assessed. If there is no uptake by, by the spleen or decreased uptake by the spleen, uh, there is functional hypospinism. We have to establish or identify the uh, um, cause behind this uh, uh, hypospinism and uh, if there is a reversible uh, cause, uh, uh, appropriate therapy should be given. If there is a reversible cause, then uh, the triad of patient education, uh, the vaccination and uh, uh, prophylactic antibiotics should be given. Management, the management of a hypospinic patient uh, should be in the line of uh, that, uh, that taken for a splenectomized or asplenic patient. And if there is severe hypospinism, vaccination may be considered, especially pneumococcal vaccination and influenza vaccination. And in adults, uh, uh, usually uh, hemococcal or meningococcal vaccination that is uh, optional, but uh, vaccination uh, for pneumococcus and influenza should be must for these hypospinic patients.
antibiotic prophylaxis uh, that uh, that can be given uh, that also depends on the severity of hypospinism that is present patient education or this is very important in cases of hypospinic patients in asplenic patients or splenectomized patients uh, the patients are already uh, given vaccination or antibiotic prophylaxis but in cases of hypospinic patients the patient should be uh, should be uh, aware or given awareness that uh, they are in, at increased susceptibility to different infections and they should be uh, also uh, taught that uh, they should always notify for any fib fibroid illnesses and also they should be uh, uh, they should be uh, made aware of the fact uh, that uh, travel to high risk uh, uh, travel to high risk countries like tropical countries uh, can uh, can be dangerous for them and they should be given malarial prophylaxis if they are tra tra traveling to tropical countries Barrier precautions should be taken, uh, that is uh, increased uh, use of different uh, uh, the different uh, uh, mosquito repellent creams and all, all these should be uh, should be used to prevent uh, any type of infections and lifelong monitoring should be given to these uh, patients. This patient, uh, part of patient education, it is, this is very vital. And hypospinism, although not uh, very common, uh, the, the, it, it should be uh, borne in mind that patient education is a very important aspect of uh, teaching these uh, patients of how to get themselves aware and uh, be prepared uh, for uh, in case if there are any there are any infections in these patients. So, lastly, the summary hyper and hypospinism these are clinical manifestations of splenic dysfunction they are not primary diagnosis and in most of the cases there is an underlying primary cause which is uh, responsible for this hyper splenic or hypospinic uh, conditions investigation of the primary etiology is very vital the treatment of the primary cause should be the approach uh, in hyper and hypospinism uh, there can be a moderate cytopenias in hyperspinism and the hyperspinism is usually associated uh, with uh, moderate cytopenias. It usually does not require treatment. The screen uh, should not... Uh, it, uh, our aim always should be uh, to try to save the screen as far as possible. Spinectomy uh, can be done if there is massive splenomegaly of, or if there is worsening cytopenias not responding to therapies and uh, splenectomy should only be done if it's absolutely required identification of hypospinism is essential because uh, unlike hyperspinism hypospinism is missed in most of the cases and uh, uh, the uh, the ass proper assessment of the blood smear and the proper uh, evaluation of the blood smear abnormalities for identification of the different red cell inclusions can be a primary and uh, for, uh, and first guide for assessment of uh, or identification of hypospinism and lastly in cases of hypospinism and in patients undergoing splenectomy vaccination and antibiotic prophylaxis is mandatory mandatory as is patient education so thank you uh, so this is all about hy hyperspinism and hypospinism uh, thank you dr anikhet uh, very elaborate almost two hours lecture <coughs> and very nicely detailed out i agree I with you i mean it is very see hyperspinism is something which is uh, quite common large spleens it's very easy for us to pick it up yes sir and uh, the clinical as well as laboratory indicators are very clear cut and very 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 easy for us to pick up but for hypospinism which can yes. be anatomical or functional or functional uh, yeah, anatomical and functional, both hypospinisms are a difficult entity. Picking up howl javel bodies, one really need to keep it in mind before seeing yes. peripheral smears. And many a times, many of these howl javel bodies may actually be artifacts, which may yes. be overread. Yeah. So anyway, it was very, very nice presentation, very detailed, and it would be very useful for everybody to go through this and understand Thank what you. hyper and hypospinism is. Thank you, Dr. Aniket. We will yeah. look forward for your next lecture soon. Yeah. Thank Thanks you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, man.
God bless you. Bye.